It was probably about uh, eight or nine years ago uh, that I finally pieced things together in terms of what the, the split tear is. Um, I'd had a large number of patients that came in with pain in, in, in this region of their wrist and, and we just couldn't find the solution to it. Uh, they, were, uh, they were stable, they didn't have any sense of dislocation, they uh, uh, had uh, typically pain that was mechanically re related, in other words they had to be doing something to, to have the pain so I knew, I knew it wasn't from a nerve or, or, or something else. But we would uh, find normal x-rays, uh, MRI studies uh, were just becoming a little bit more uh, popular in terms of uh, evaluating the wrist and those were, uh, those were read as normal. Uh, we'd do arthrograms, any number of imaging studies and they were all normal, yet these patients continued to have, have this pain. And I would even uh, take them to the operating room uh, uh, and perform an arthroscopy, which is looking inside the wrist joint with a small telescope. And typically I would see an area that was uh, uh, related to this uh, region of the wrist geographically that was just sort of covered with, with uh, uh, little projections of, of blood vessels. And it looks, uh, the best way to describe it is that it looks angry, it looks irritated. And uh, uh, if you've ever seen any movies like uh, Jacques Cousteau or something, it looks like a, a, a cluster of sea anemones sort of uh, drifting in the, uh, in the current. And uh, uh, so I'd say, well, you know, maybe this is an area of irritation, so I would uh, uh, take a, a small shaver, which is a, a rotating tool, much like a, a, a razor uh, to a certain degree, and be able to go in and clean this area off. And I, I would think, well, maybe that was, that was all there was to it. And uh, uh, just in the hopes that this area of irritation was actually the cause of, of these patients' pain. And sure enough, for two months, three months maybe after surgery, they'd feel a little bit better, but then it would come back. Uh, the, the same pain would come back, and it was really quite frustrating. I had a number of patients that came in after being treated by other surgeons under so similar circumstances, and they had had some uh, relatively radical surgery done, uh, even removal of the end of the bone. We call that a DARA resection. And that's sort of a, a last resort type of an operation that we do for patients that have really bad arthritis or something. But this was, these, these people had normal ulnar heads. They had good cartilage. They didn't have any evidence of arthritis. But in an attempt to try and, and uh, treat this pain, their surgeon would actually remove the owner head. Well, now they had two problems. Uh, now they had their original pain, which didn't go away, and they have an unstable forearm because they're missing part of their bone. And so it was clearly frustrating to everybody. This, this was not negligent care. This wasn't bad judgment. It's just that we didn't have any alternatives because we didn't understand what was, what was wrong with it. And, and so I... I would had some uh, grants uh, through uh, National Institutes of Health looking at, at different aspects of the mechanics of the distal radial ulnar joint, so I was pretty up to date with, with uh, the anatomy, with the mechanics of the joint, and, and I, I just I said, I've, I'm missing something here. I, I have to listen to what the patients are, are telling me, that, that indeed they're telling me the truth, that it hurts right here, and then I, I just started looking backwards saying well what's in there uh, we've got skin there's a little bit of fat underneath the skin there is a nerve that goes uh, right through that area but again this was not nerve pain and then there was the 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 socket the, the the ligament tissue that forms the socket of the joint and that's what I was seeing on the inside with the arthroscope and so I said there's nothing else there's nothing else there there must be something abnormal with that with that joint capsule. So the next several patients that I was looking at, after shaving down the, uh, that uh, irritated tissue, I started questioning, well, what is it that I'm actually looking at at this point? And I was assuming that I was looking at the surface of the ligament, but indeed, it turns out that I was looking at the interior of the ligament because the ligament had split open and had, had revealed itself, much like you take a book and you open up a book, I was looking at the inside of the pages, whereas before I was just assuming I was looking at the, at the end of the book. I didn't realize that it had actually split open. It wasn't until I pulled the arthroscope back that I recognized the fact that this was, this was a separate cavity. It, it, I almost, you almost need to have a sticker on the monitor when you're looking at an arthroscope that's like on your rearview mirror, you know, that objects are, are smaller than what they appear to be, because you lose perspective sometimes about how, how little things, uh, how big 
little things are with the arthroscope. And that was one of uh, very few aha moments that I've had where I, where I said, oh, I get it now. That, that I'm actually looking at the interior of the ligament. It's still connecting one bone to another, so the joint system is stable. It's just that this has been a, a, a tearing down the length of the, of the ligament. And uh, so I thought, well, what, what can I do about this? And uh, there's a technique that's been used in, in other joints uh, to apply suture material uh, across tissues using an arthroscope. And so I just modified that for, for this particular procedure, put a couple of stitches in, and, uh, and that was the second aha moment, because once I got the stitches in and it closed this back up, that's the way it's supposed to look. That's the way it looks in everybody else. I just didn't recognize that. And it turns out nobody else has recognized that either. And so I, I routinely started doing this now on these patients, and there are a lot of them. There, there are a lot of patients that have this. They're, they're, only about half of them report any, any recollection of, of a specific injury. So half of these guys are coming in with, with a sort of chronic nagging pain, and they, and they don't understand it. They, they, they can't find anything wrong. Their doctor doesn't, doesn't necessarily believe them that they've got this kind of pain.